screenplays follow a certain set of conventions. For example, they're generally between 90 to 120 pages, use Black Courier Final Draft font, and have set margins. But there's a script I just read that breaks all of these rules, and it even has pictures. <gasps> In this episode, I want to look at the first draft of Scott Beck and Brian Wood's A Quiet Place and how the script made for an unconventional yet immersive reading experience. Keep in mind this is the Beck and Wood's draft, not the Krasinski rewrite which showed in theaters, so there will be some differences including names of the characters. The first noticeable difference is that the script is only 67 pages, 22 less than the recommended minimum of 90, and of these 67, a few take up space with pictures, unconventional formatting and fonts. On page 28, for example, we see a Monopoly board which acts as a makeshift map, showing where the shed, lake, valley, and turbine are in relation to one another. A few pages later, we see a collection of pins April, the deaf daughter, keeps of her long-lost sister. Now in this draft, there's a bunch of flashbacks involving John and a daughter who died before the invasion of the monsters, which changed in the Krasinski draft. These pins act as a motif, showing up several times in the script, and because we are shown them visually, they're easier to remember, especially when they are vital to the plot. Newspaper headlines, like the one here on page 9, or the faded ones on page 26, are written in the font and style like they would in actual newspapers. They are attempts to draw us in and make us feel more a part of the world. On page 53, the writers go so far as to insert a visual comparison between a skyscraper, Statue of Liberty, and a wind turbine. The wind turbine playing an important role in this draft's third act, where the characters try to trap the monster within its hull. When John finally traps the monster, his plan backfires when he realizes the monster can see in the dark. This realization is depicted in the script when the font changes to white set against a black backdrop shown here. Pictures aside, Beck and Woods format the pages differently as well. In one of the tensest scenes where John needs to get back to his pregnant wife who is giving birth during a monster attack, an entire five pages is devoted to just 15 words. John is 30 feet away from the shed, 20 feet away, 10 feet, 5, snap. You may have noticed that even the font gets bigger as John closes in. Two pages later, the opposite happens. The font gets smaller quiet. And sound is a crucial element to the story. As such, the writers underline almost every bit of sound, accentuating its importance. Here on page 13, you can get a sense of what a typical page looks like. But formatting is also used creatively, like here on page 60, when the word closer is used to denote two characters coming closer and closer together. There are countless other examples riddled throughout the script which I encourage you to check out on your own, but the question remains, does it work? And I would say yes, but with caution. The creative choices made by the writers, such as pictures and formatting changes, aren't put in just for the fun of it, rather because they fit the story, they have purpose, they elevate it. But no amount of pictures or changes can fix a bad script, and this draft, although not as strong as Grzynski's, delivers a unique premise and solid story executed in a fashion that immerses the reader in this special world. If you haven't seen the movie or read the script, go check it out. And until next time, keep on writing. If you like this video, please like and subscribe with the bell on and check out my other videos below.